Welcome, everyone. <laughs> All right, so uh, there are no slides for this talk because we're going to have a uh, coding, a live coding adventure together. The premise of my talk is uh, how to create a blog using Ruby on Rails in 15 minutes. And we're not actually going to do it in 15 minutes because this talk is uh, supposed to be closer to 40 minutes in length. And we'll be doing some explaining. But the idea is, is that um, is that if you sat down and you were just writing this code that you probably could build it in 15 minutes. Um, in the original talk, it actually was 15 minutes in length, but um, I intend to do a little bit more explaining tonight, uh, given that when we announced this, I said, no experience necessary. And I gave uh, this talk for my wife last night as she was like, hey, you should practice rehearsing this. Um, she's like, okay, so you said no experience necessary. So like, what is Rails? And I'm like, okay, well, I said no experience necessary, but like, you know, the folks that will be there will have a premise of, of, of kind of the basics of web and such. Um, so this, this talk is, is definitely geared towards folks that um, maybe don't have experience with Ruby or have experience with Rails, but have um, some surrounding knowledge with uh, web development and things of that nature. Um, also, one more disclaimer is that the kind of code that I'll be writing tonight uh, is what I would consider maybe prototyping code. So this is not necessarily code that you should think, okay, this is how exactly I'm gonna write my code. Um, I think the goal of the talk is um, to inspire folks that maybe are beginning uh, and interested. Um, and so we're not gonna get too hung up on um, writing things in a super verbose way, okay? So with that, uh, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is see if I can take over the screen. So oh, give me a moment. All right. Cool, there we go. All right, um, so when DHH originally gave this talk, um, he said something, uh, when, whenever something happened that you were supposed to be surprised about, he said, whoops, does anybody remember that? This thing, that was like, like he, I think maybe he coined it or somebody else did later, but they called it the whoops video. So I'm gonna try to remember just to say whoops every once in a while as we go through this together. Uh, pull up some notes, okay. So you can see I have my terminal on the right uh, and I have a browser on the left. I'm gonna try to keep things in one uh, space here so we're not switching around too much. Um, I've done very little setup for this so far. So I'm actually gonna start by going into uh, my project directory here, this is where I keep my personal things, Benjamin Wood. And um, the first thing that you would do is you would gem install Rails. This assumes that you already have Ruby installed on your machine and Ruby gems, and that's kind of outside of the scope of this discussion. Um, I actually already have it installed, but there it is again. Uh, we're gonna be working with the latest version of Rails, which is Rails 6. Um, also, if I Ruby-V, we can see we're on Ruby uh, 2.7, okay? All right, so the first thing that you would do when you're starting a Rails project is you would say Rails new, and um, if you don't know what you're doing with it, you'd probably say something like this. You'd say help. Um, we won't go through all the options because this is a bit overwhelming, I suppose, but uh, basically Rails new is a command that you would run like such. You can see Rails new app path and then options. Um, you, can, you can customize things about the new Rails project that it starts. Um, if we go down towards the bottom, you can see there's a nice example here called Rails new and it gives a path to a blog, um, to a, or a web blog, I should say. Web blog, I guess that's how you pronounce it. We're gonna do it similarly. Uh, Rails new, we're gonna say blog, and uh, I'm gonna give it two options. One is to skip the, uh, the actual bundle, which is basically gonna install other dependent libraries, gems as we call them. Um, I already have them installed, so it's just gonna save us a little bit of time. Um, and the other is I'm gonna skip uh, installing tests, not because we're not gonna do tests, hopefully we'll have time for it, but we're gonna use RSpec for it, which is another tool that is not installed by default, so. Um, Already done creating most of the files. What it's doing now is it's doing JavaScript things, which is why it takes so long. Uh, that's a burn. <laughs> that's a burn. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's actually just installing uh, web webpack things and uh, downloading dependencies and such. But it's done already. Great. So now we're going to cd into our blog directory, and I'm going to open up a editor, so we can look at it. JavaScript. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Just not the execution of JavaScript, but the, the tooling maybe. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to open up a, yeah, great, whoops. Okay, hold on. All right, I accidentally just closed my editor, so hold on a moment. Let's do this. Recent. 
and block. Great. Okay, so I'm using VS Code, which you may or may not be familiar with. And I'm going to uh, open up a terminal here. And we're in the blog directory here. The first thing I'm going to do before doing anything else is I'm going to start up a Rails server so we can see what we have without doing anything else at all other than just installing Rails and going into the directory and saying Rails S. S is short for server. You can type Rails server, same command. Um, you can see that by default we are, uh, yeah, here's where it says. So this is, this is uh, what localhost actually is, okay? This IP address here, port 3000. Um, I'm just gonna go to localhost here, localhost port 3000, and you can see it says Rails, yay, uh, you're on Rails. This screen has changed a little bit since 2005, but this is more or less the same experience that DHH uh, described 15 years ago, generating a Rails project, starting up a Rails server, and here we are, so we're off to a good start. All right, um, the next thing that I want to do um, is just talk about the folder structure a little bit here. Um, it's often said that one of the most difficult things in programming is naming things. I think that's definitely true. I would say the other one um, is just like coming up with a convention for where you put your files, which I think is kind of in the same category um, because you've got so many choices. And that's one of the th things that's nice about Rails is even though a lot of these directories are more or less empty, um, and even a lot of these files are empty, they're here for you. And um, a few of those might be like your uh, models directory here, um, your views directory has just a few basic things in it, and controllers, Rails is an MVC framework. Is anybody um, unfamiliar with an MVC framework? I mean, you know what? Cool, okay, I'll, I'll go through it really briefly. So model, view, controller, MVC. Uh, model, these are the objects that represent typically the things in your database, at least in Rails. Um, and uh, the, view, the view layer is, is the layer where you're actually presenting things to the user. They're interfacing with your application. Typically, that's your HTML, web forms, things of that nature, right? Um, and then you have your controllers, which is kind of the glue that binds them. It's the thing that sits between your database and your views. You know, how do you render your views and show your information to your user? And when they submit it, like, how does that information get back to the database and communicate? And that's what the controller does. Um, so tonight, we're going to be looking at a few of those uh, areas. Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the next things that we want to look at, I'm going to stop the server for a moment, is um, the Rails generate command. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to do this. OK. I'm going to full screen this so we can see a little better. Great. Um, Rails, oops. Rails, uh, G is short for generate. I like using shorthand. Rails G dash dash help. Is there an OG? What's that? Is there an OG? Uh, there, uh, <laughs> G, is, it, G is the OG, I guess. <laughs> um, OK, so whoops, this scrolls a little fast. Let's see, slowly. OK, so you can see the usage of the command here is Rails generate, uh, and then you specify a generator, and you can give some options and arguments. Um, there's a number that you can choose from, and they're listed here. Uh, there's a couple that we're going to be looking at tonight. One is scaffold and the other is resource a little bit later on. Um, if you want to see what the specific options are for a given generator, you can say Rails G and then give it the name of the generator. So like scaffold dash dash help. And we can learn a little bit more about what scaffold does. Okay, so I'm not going to read the entire description. But this little first section here gives a good overview of what the scaffold generator does, okay? So it, uh, a scaffold, it scaffolds an entire resource from model and migration to controller and views along with a full test suite, which actually that part's gonna get skipped for now. Uh, the resource is ready to use as a starting point for your RESTful resource-oriented applications. Um, that, if it doesn't make sense yet, I think will make a little bit more sense as we go on. Um, again, there's some nice examples down here at the bottom, and it just so happens that one of the examples that's here is more or less uh, what, we, what we want. So let's see if I can get up here. I'm going to copy the second one. Notice I'm skipping the published boolean here. I'm going to explain what this does. So Rails generate scaffold post. So our resource is going to be called post. Remember, we're building a blog. So of course, the building block, first building block of a, of a blog is to have a post. Um, and then it has a, a title of type string. And I'm talking about database type here. So it's a database column that is a string type column. And then there's a, a body um, 
attribute as well, and that is of type text. Um, and then, of course, if we wanted to deal with published, that would just be a Boolean is true or false, is the article published or not, but we're skipping that. So with that, we run it. Okay, and it generates some files for us, which is excellent. Let's do this. Let's say Rails uh, S. And all these commands were there 15 years ago as well? They were. Okay. Yep, yep, the scaffold command was. Um, there was one small difference 15 years ago with scaffold, which is that by default, the command didn't actually generate all the code that's inside of the controllers and views. It was like something that kind of sat behind the scenes that you could customize if you want. And now it actually just generates all the code for you to just get in there and start changing it right away, um, which is a little bit more friendly, a little bit less magical. Um, so I actually uh, did something on purpose here, which is that I didn't run our migrations. Um, a, a database migration, Rail, Rails uh, handles that uh, for us, it creates a database mi migration but doesn't actually run the migration. It gives you a chance to look at it and perhaps change it. In this case, I think we should. So let's go take a look at that. The folder structure here, uh, we have a config direct, nope, sorry, that's not true, a database directory. And inside of that, there's something called migrate. And you can see that we now have one file in there that didn't exist before. Let's look at that. Uh, so this migration create posts. And inside of uh, this class here, there's something called change. Um, and then there's kind of almost a DSL here where we have create table, and the table we're creating is posts, which makes sense, right? And then we talked about our two attributes or columns. One is title and body, and just like the types that we defined at the command line, right? Um, we want to be good developers, and we want to add something to these. We want to say null false to both of them. What this is going to do is it's going to ensure that you, that the database restricts you from creating a post that doesn't have a title or that doesn't have a body, okay? So we added that to it. Um, Rails actually in recent years, this is something that didn't exist 15 years ago, is you have a button you can click to run the migrations from your browser, which is very nice um, and might save you a few seconds. We'll run migrations uh, the more traditional way in a little bit. So here we are uh, back at our home page, and what happens if we just, without doing anything else, go to posts? And whoops, there it is, okay, I said it. Um, so we have a post index view, and from here we have a button um, where we can click new post, and we can say, you can see I've done this before, hello Vancouver, I like Rails. We can create a post, and voila, just like that, you can look at our URL up here, we have uh, an, a path that looks like post slash one, one represents the ID of our post, which this is the first post, so it gets post one. And if we go back, we get back to our index view, and we now see a listing of uh, posts. Now I'm going to create one more here, and we'll call it Hello Portland. I'm not terribly original, so we're going to go for some placeholder text and do something just a little bit longer. Does anybody else use this resource right here? It's pretty great if you don't have a shorter way of getting there some placeholder text. There's a hipster. Exception. There is, hipster which I should have used for Hello Portland. You're right. Oh, man, what was I thinking? Man, so true. Yep, <laughs> that's true, I could edit it. Okay, let's do it. Um, so what is that, hipster ipsum? Did I get that right? Hipster ipsum. Beer me. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just not read it too closely, okay? So you guys can see here we have some, some hipster ipsum, okay? We'll get to look at that. And we get to test our edit uh, action as well. Expand that a little bit, paste it in there. <laughs> Gluten free. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, this, this, it's not very fitting that we have hipster ipsum in here. This is not React, it's true. Yep. Okay, so um, we have our post, but this isn't looking very much like a blog yet. Would you agree? Um, this, is, this is looking very, very boilerplate crud create, update, and destroy. We can do all these things, but it doesn't look like a blog. Yeah, so, yes, exactly. It looks like an engineer designed this, which one did. Um, and if we go back into our app directory, um, we're gonna look at a couple of things, and then we're gonna dive into looking at some views. So one is I wanna show you that it created a post model here, which is empty currently. It also created a post controller. Let me make that a little bigger. 
Um, and as you can see, there's some code in here. We're not actually going to take the time right now to look through each action, but you can see we have like an index action, which we looked at, show, view, and new. So this is a RESTful contr controller that provides CRUD, basic CRUD actions, OK? And if we go down to views, we see we now have a nice directory here uh, with views that have been pre-populated uh, for us, and that's actually what is, is creating what we see here on the left. So if we go over to our indexed, uh, index HTML.erb, we have something that looks like this. Now, you may, if uh, you've done web development, you, you may look at this and go, oh, cool, I know where we're at. This is HTML. And it is. Um, it's also ERB. And ERB is the templating language of choice for most Rubyists and definitely the default for Rails. And you can see some of these special little looking tags in here, like these guys right here. And then inside of that, you have just regular old Ruby code. Um, it is convention to use helper methods and have a little bit of Ruby code actually straight in your views. Um, but uh, you wouldn't write a lot of Ruby code in your views. So like into what you see here is, is, is common. Uh, one of the first things I think we should do is we should take the title, which is an H1, and we should call this Ben's blog. And we see that if we update that and we switch over and hit refresh, that we instantly get our change for Ben's blog, which is great. Yes, you do have to hit refresh. Um, however, you wouldn't have to ref hit refresh uh, if we were using Webpack and, uh, and it was regenerating our bundle force. It would, it would refresh. Yes, some JavaScript. OK, it's, that's where you're at. <sighs> OK. Um, so now we have Ben's blog. And of course, the, the main problem with this blog is that it's a table. <laughs> Nobody's blog is a table in 2020 or in 2005, actually. Um, so let's cruise on down here to the, the uh, table body and just cut this out of here. And let's get rid of all the rest of this stuff, because we don't really need it. And I'm going to correct some indentation here. And now we're still uh, we're left with you know the, the meat of, of the uh, table, um, but there are still some tags in here that we don't want. So let's just get rid of these. See if I can do this properly. Uh, we want to home delete. Okay, and then let's change this to a div. Div. Oops. Let's see here. Yeah, I know, right? Come on now. Okay, I'm just going to type it. I see that, yeah. I'm just going to do this. OK. All right. So with that, um, this should render, but it's not going to quite look right yet. But actually, it already looks better somehow, <laughs> I think. Maybe not. Um, so I think, I think something that would definitely help would be if we took our title and we made it a heading tag. So let's wrap this title in an H2 and save it, and voila, so we have uh, nice titles now for each of our posts. Um, you can see what this is doing. I didn't, I didn't describe it already, but you know, we, we have a collection of posts here, which is provided by our controller, and then we're just iterating over the collection of posts. And so inside of this do block, which is all this code right here, uh, we are dealing with a single post, and we get to define our HTML to render it. OK, um, we should probably put our post body in, a, in like a paragraph tag or something like that. That's, Actually, that's probably not true, but let's just put in a paragraph tag for now for some, for some padding, um, given that each of our posts currently have only one paragraph. <laughs> Again, we're prototyping, OK? Uh, and let's refresh. What do we got? OK, that's starting to look pretty good. Um, let's go up here beneath the heading to tag, and we're going to use a small tag, because that's still a thing in HTML um, that nobody uses. And let's add a created, uh, a created at date. If we had a published at, it would probably display like a published date, but let's just work with created. Oh, by the way, you may notice like created. Where'd that come from? That wasn't one of our columns when we created posts. Rails provides you with a column to store the created date of your object and also when it was last updated. Um, I don't mean to be calling this created at. We're just going to say created. And we're going to insert a new ERB tag here. And we're going to say post .created at, And let's see what that looks like. Uh, we have it listed there, but that's not a very friendly date. So we can do a little bit of formatting on that, which Rails provides us um, with a shortcut to formatting a date in a way that we can utilize. Um, what did I say? Oh, 2S. I was mad because I typoed there. Okay, so created February 19th, 
um, and it has a time. It's definitely not 321. Um, this must be like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a Linux. It's a Linux thing. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. That's true. Isn't it in depth <laughs> it's 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 or probably UTC. Yeah, it's UTC. It's, I'm sure it's UTC. Yeah. Uh, okay. So great. We have a created at date. Um, another thing down here, we have this this button for show. But if you have a blog, you're probably going to like link the title of it or something to actually click on it and go to the post, right? So let's let's go ahead and grab this tag and let's move it up here. Um, and let's take our post title, delete that tag, and replace show with the post title. And you can see how this works, or you might guess. Oops, opened up another editor. Okay. Um, link to is a, a view helper method that Rails provides that creates just an href tag, essentially. Um, you can have a, some text to display for the link and then a uh, URL. This obviously is not a URL, but Rails knows how to take a post and give you the show view for a post, and it actually will, will generate the path for us automatically. Um, so with that, we hit refresh, and voila, we can now go to each of these like such, which I won't click on it. Um, one final thing I think we should do is let's move these links up to that small tag, and let's separate them with a the pipe character maybe. There we go. Okay. This is looking this is looking more like a blog already. So if we click on one of these, like Hello Portland, um, that's a bummer. It it displays it, but it doesn't use any of the code that we just wrote, and we don't want to rewrite the code that we just wrote to display here again. Wouldn't it be nice if we could take the code we wrote and we could share it uh, with the show view? Well, Rails provides a way for us to do that as well, using something called a partial. So let's look at our post directory here under views and create a new file. And we're going to start with an underscore, which is a Rails convention uh, for naming partials. And we're going to call it post. And the idea here is that we're going to take the code that is for a single post and we're going to use it here. We're going to render it in the index view and then we're also going to go use it in the show view, which is pretty straightforward to do. Everything inside of the do block has to do with a single post. So we're just going to cut it out of there and paste it here. Whoops, not twice. And fix the indentation. And then here, we add a tag. We say render post. And with that, if we go back to the index view and refresh, if it looks exactly the same, then we did the job right. Because we effectively wanted to change nothing here. We were just moving the code to a different location. But what's great about this is now we can go to the show view, which is right here. And if we click on Hello Portland, you can see how this code maps to what you're seeing on the screen. We have like a title, body, right? This, these are like strong, uh, strong tags, right? Let's remove these. And let's do a similar thing. We're going to say render. This time we're going to say at post, because we're not iterating over a collection of posts. We have the post assigned to an instance variable by the controller. So we're working with a single post, and that's what that at sign means in Ruby, is it's an instance variable. And voila, that works. Now, in a real blog, you probably want to have your index view and your show view be exactly the same. But for the purposes of our demonstration today, we're just going to say, great, this is, this is what we want. Um, one other thing we could do here is we could remove the edit action from the show view that's down here. See, it says edit because we already have edit up here, and we don't really need it twice. So now we just have um, a back button. OK. Great, so this is good. Um, but this is the internet, and people like to have a voice. So wouldn't it be great if our blog had the ability to leave comments? Yes, comments. I am, yes. <laughs> the trolls in the audience are like, ah, yes, just let me comment on this. And I'm sure they will. Um, so this is cool. Remember how when we were looking at generators earlier and we said we we're going to look at scaffold and we're also going to look at resource? We did scaffold already to create post. And now we're going to look at the resource generator. So uh, let's see here. Let's close some stuff so we can make this full screen again. Oh, OK. Rails g resource dash dash help. And we can see what it does. So, description, 
Ah, uh, okay. There, okay. So again, the description, this is just a little bit different, very similar though. It stubs out a new resource, including an empty model and controller suitable for a restful resource-oriented application. Pass the singular model name, either camel case or underscored as the first parameter and an optional list of attribute pairs. Um, the main difference here between this and scaffold is that, as you can see, it says it creates an empty model, which so does scaffold, but also an empty controller. So the controller isn't gonna have all the actions filled out in it. It's also not gonna create all of the views, which is good because we, we don't want all that stuff for a comment. We want to be able to create a comment um, and maybe if there's a real blog, there's other stuff you'd want to do, but at this point, we just want to have a form where you can type something in the box, hit create, and it's going to display it there, okay? So down here, we have some examples again. Um, we can kind of uh, follow suit, Rails, G, resource. This time, it's going to be comments. And um, our first attribute is actually going to be um, post because we want our comments model and therefore our comments database table to have a relationship to post. We want a comment to belong to post. And this is how you would do that is you would say post and references. And what that's going to do is create that. Um, it's going to create that relationship for you automatically. And we'll go look at the code that does that. The other thing we want is a uh, body attribute. And this will be of type text. This will be what stores the actual comment text. So let's run that. And it did some stuff for us, which is great. Let's go look at that a little bit. I should keep that up. Anonymous comments are the best comments. Yes. Yes, you might, you might notice that like, there's no concept of users or like who's an admin to create a, a blog article or anything like that. You can do all that with Rails. We're not doing it right now um, because that would, that would take us a little too long, I think. Uh, let's see here. So I was going to go to database, migrate, and now we have another migration. And this time we're creating uh, comments. You can see that we have something here called references, post, um, which it already knows and, and defaults to null false, which is great. This means that you can't create a comment uh, that doesn't belong to a post because that would be invalid in the system. Also uh, creates... A migration is just a way to mm -hmm. change the SQLite database yep. without having to manually do it? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, yep. Um, and actually, somebody had asked earlier at dinner if the process had changed much from 2015 to the talk we're giving tonight. This is one of the areas in which it changed, which is that in 2005, uh, and I said 2015 earlier, uh, in 2005, they didn't have migration. So he was actually going to like a, um, like a MySQL uh, like GUI interface and creating tables and stuff. Um, so, so yeah, so Rails has matured a bit. We have a built-in way to actually uh, make those changes to your database schema. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. That's true. Yep. Um, okay. And then another thing we can see here is it has a foreign key true, which is a default, which is great, which means that um, you you can't delete a post and end up with a comment that is related to that post that is now invalid because the post doesn't exist. Even that post ID is referencing something that isn't there anymore. So that's what the foreign key does in this case. Again. Um, we're going to add null false to our body because we don't want people to create empty um, comments. Aren't they all empty anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's deep. I'm depressed. <laughs> um, okay, so earlier I'd said that we'd run migrations another way uh, and the more traditional way, and that would be to actually run this from the console. And we can do that by saying Rails db colon migrate. Kind of like our generate command, there's other commands that Rails provides. It's not for generating things, but it's for executing stuff. This is one of them. So Rails DB migrate should run the migration. Notice it didn't do anything with the first migration because that one's already done. Rails keeps track of that, which is great. It just runs changes, new migrations that haven't already been applied to the database. Um, we haven't looked at this yet, but I think it would be useful if we could go and create a comment that's associated with our post and implement the part that displays the comment in the show view before we actually implement the form to create a new one. So let's look at the console. We can say Rails C. C is short for console. And if we get our posts, we just say like post.all, we can see that we have a collection of posts. So this is 
Um, our first one here is Hello Vancouver, and if you look a little bit further down the line there, there's Hello Portland. Let's look at our post.last is Hello Portland, and we can say um, comments, which this actually isn't going to work because I forgot something, which is that we need to go look at the, let's look at the comment model first. See that it has a relationship here to uh, post, belongs to post, so a comment, it, um, it, well, okay, it belongs to a post. It's associated with the post, right? Um, and then the other side of the relationship should be on post, and what a post is, is it has many comments. This is how you express the relationships in, in Rails world. Um, so I guess, I guess the, dif the differentiator is where the foreign key lives. The foreign key lives on comment, so it, it belongs to one post. A comment can't belong to more than one post. However, a post can have many comments, right? You can cre obviously create more than one comment. Um, so if we come back down to our console and reload and try this again, there we go. Um, it's empty because no comments exist yet, which makes sense, right? Um, notice what is returned here is an active uh, record associations collection proxy. Um, it's not actually just an empty array. Um, and what that provides us is the ability to say something like create on the end of here, method chaining. Um, and here's where we would give the, um, the attributes of the comment that we want to create. So let's say body is I like your post because everybody's nice on the internet. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, we, we see that a uh, comment is returned and it has a nice post ID and all of that. If we look here again at, but it's anonymous, yep, post.last.comments, we get our comment back. <laughs> yeah, this is a rare occurrence, so take a picture, everybody. Okay, friendly, anonymous. That's right, yeah, that's not rare, you're right. People do that, <laughs> probably from the console. Um, yeah. Okay, so with that, we're going to close the models. I'm just going to get back to close that, close that, and let's see here. Where we want? We don't want to be an index. We want to be here. That seems right. Yeah. Okay, so this is our show view, and here we have. I need to start the server. Let's do Rails S. Does code get ready your trailing new lines? Um, it can. It is not automatically right now. It can on save, um, or you can, you, you can like hit a hotkey to do it. Yeah. Did it seem like it was? Like, did you catch one? No. Okay. It's just irritating seeing all these empty new ones that you're going to commit up and see the little one. Oh, we're not going to commit anything. Just forget that, yeah. <laughs> who, needs, who needs version control? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this 2005. Did it even exist? Um, <laughs> okay. So, so here we are. Um, if we say hello, we should see this over here. We'll make, just make sure we're in the right view. Hello, there we are. Okay, great. Um, and notice we're not going to put this in our post partial because we don't want the comments to display on the index view. We only want them to display here. So we're going to put them right under where we render the post partial. Um, so let's do this. Let's, let's uh, insert a ERB tag, um, and it's going to be at post.each do. Oops, not post. Dot, it's going to post dot comments. Each do comment. It's more like it. Um, and then an end here. And within inside of the block, we can define how we want the comment to display. So let's just put a div here. And let's have a um, comment dot body. Seems pretty reasonable. Whoops. There it is. Um, <laughs> I like your post, so so this is great. Um, but I uh, I would like it if other people could comment on my blog and not just me saying how much I like my own blog. So, so, more three thousand on your firewall. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> What's that? What's the magic that gives you access to comments there? What's the magic that gives us access to what comments? Was the, like, was it the relationship? It was the relationship. Absolutely. Yep. Did you need because, both relationships, or was it the? Nope. You actually only need the has many relationship. Okay. In this case, yep. Anywhere, and now that we've added that has many posts, or sorry, has many comments on the post model, anywhere that you have an instance of post, uh, you now have comments on it. Yep. Previously, you only had access to the relationship on the other side. Yes, 
exactly. Yeah, previously you could say, uh, if you had a comment, you say comment.post and you could see it, but not the other way around. So now we have both, which is great. Okay, so let's see here. Let's, before we start creating our form, which is definitely the next thing that we want to do, let's take a venture over to our routes file. Um, we haven't talked about this yet, but as you can see, there's already a couple of entries in here that relate to things that we've been doing, and that's because our generators have created this stuff for us. When we created the, the post scaffold, we put in resources posts. When we created the comment scaffold, we put in resources comments. Um, this is close to what we want, but in this, in the, uh, um, for, for the sake of comments at least, we actually don't want it just like this. It's not equal to posts. Um, a comment is something that belongs to posts, and we want our URLs to reflect that, and that's what routes are all about. Um, Rails actually generates your URLs and maps them to your controller actions so you can have responses and all those sorts of things, right? Um, and let's do, actually, you know, before we do this, it'll make more sense if we look at what the routes look like right now. So, yes, exactly. I'm so glad you asked. Um, Rails provides the command Rails routes. Is R shorthand for Rails? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, that's interesting. You're interesting. That's probably from your ZSH. It must be from ZSH running the last command. Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> I was like, it just worked. Why did it work? <laughs> Do you use the plugin for Rails? Or... I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I do. Yeah. Anyways, um, so this is a lot to read, and you can actually see things are wrapping around funny, which makes it hard to read. So just kind of disregard this for a second, except to make note that hey, you can see a full listing of all the routes that. Rails has created. Um, things that relate to stuff that we're not dealing with right now as well, um, but you could learn more about certainly. Let's take a look though specifically at our um, routes that relate to a comment as of right now. So I'm gonna grep for comment. Comments actually. Um, grep is just a way of saying, show me lines that have the occurrence of this string in it, comments. You can do more with grep, but we'll just do this. Okay, great. So you can see we have, we have um, routes, These, this is where it shows the path, uh, and then here's the controller and the action that it corresponds to. And it has index create new, it has all the same stuff that post has, which makes sense because if you were to look at the routes file and we just did, they're equal, like it's the same exact thing for both of them. But all we really actually want is this one right here, comments create, um, and we actually want our path to look a little bit different too. So I'm gonna make a change to the routes file and then we're gonna look at this again which should help make this make a little bit more sense. Um, so we're gonna say post do and, and we're going to just move the comments resource inside of this block that I just added here for posts. We're also going to say only uh, create. And we're going to do our command here again and see what we get. So now we have just one route. It still goes to the same action, which is good because we didn't want to change that. But notice that it's now post slash post ID and then comments. Um, so when we submit our comment, we're going to have to embed what post that comment is supposed to be associated with in the URL itself, which is great in the way RESTful things should work. Uh, okay, we'll close routes for now. And let's start working on our web form. So Rails, just like we've seen some helpers like Link2, it provides other helpers to use in your view, and one of them is Form4. And what do we want a form for? Well, we want a form for a comment, and specifically we want a form for a comment that belongs to the post that we're working with. So um, we're going to pass an argument here called post, and we're going to say comments.new. Uh, so we're just going to build a comment, we're not actually creating one. Notice we we called create when we were creating one earlier right now. We're just saying new, which builds an instance of it, but it doesn't actually put it in the database. Um, and then we're going to give it a URL specifically because it doesn't actually know about how the resource is now nested that we just created. We're gonna say um, post comments path. And we're- uh, From right here. So when you um, look at your routes, one of the pieces of information that it gives you, okay, goodness gracious, right there, um, is it tells you 
your, uh, the names of your route helpers. Rails provides route helpers to actually generate your URL so that you don't have to like construct the URLs yourself. Um, so post comments path is gonna generate the path with the appropriate ID in it because we're passing uh, post to it as the first argument. So that's the function that was symbol? Which, which part, the, the method? It's a method, yeah. Yep, correct, yep, it's a method, yeah. It's dynamically going to generate based on what uh, argument we pass to it. And we're gonna say do, in this case, um, we're passing the form object into the block, which we're gonna use in just a moment. And we're gonna end our block here. And we're going to say f dot um, text field, nope, text area. And we're going to say body. And we're also gonna have a submit button like that. And we're gonna put a break tag in the middle because we're not writing CSS. Oops, Rails S. I'm really impatient apparently. Uh, I did something wrong. Uh, and the thing I did wrong is that I didn't, can anybody spot it? Yeah, got it. Hey, great. Um, so, okay. Yep. Yeah, in a perfect world, in a perfect world they would. Um, so this should be expected, right? Because we just submitted it, but we, we haven't written our controller action yet. It doesn't know what to do with the form that we've submitted. And Rails is nice enough to give us a nice error and say something like unknown action. The action create could not be found in the comments controller. So let's go take a look. Cool. So empty controller, right? We can create a method in here called create to handle this. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the post that this comment is supposed to belong to. And what we can do there is we can say post, we're gonna just assign it to a variable, we're gonna say post equals post.find params post ID. Um, I know that in our HTTP parameters, um, I know that it is the, the thing that we're after is called post ID because it said that in uh, the display of routes when we were looking earlier. You might not have made note, but it was there. So we have a post, um, and then this is pretty familiar. We know how to um, create a comment at this point. So let's say post.comments.create, and this is where normally we would say body and would give it some parameters, right? It happens that we only have one argument that we're assigning, so um, we're actually just gonna do that. That's simple. Params, uh, and this would be um, comment, and this would be body. And then we're gonna say redirect to, redirect to post, and we're gonna display a notice too that says like, um, created, uh, comment created. So Rails provides us this um, ability to display a notice after something happens, just to give the user some context about what's going on. Um, notice we said re just redirect a post. Again, Rails, this is kind of some magic. It knows what URL to redirect them to. When we just say redirect to post, it means go to the show view of the post. Uh, so if we did everything right, we can just hit refresh. Comment created, I'm a troll. I don't like your post, there it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're actually, we're actually a little bit over time already. I had uh, a couple other things that I wanted to show, um, but I think we should probably pause here, and that's a shame because the next thing was tests. Um, Aww. I know. I thought the next thing was going to be like moderation features, like a delete, delete on the comments. Nope. <laughs> we got to write some tests at some point. We got to stop. We got to stop adding features. We got to write some tests. Can you at least go um, through like setting up our sync and then let us our, take it? Our sync or our spec, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that sentence actually worked because I'm thinking like, set up our sync and then we'll take it from there. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a hard time parsing that for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, ah heck, let's, let's do it unless anybody's opposed. Um, it should be pretty quick, okay. Let's go down to, let's just go here. This is the gem file. We haven't looked at this yet, but this was generated for us. Notice it has things like Rails in it. Um, some other dependencies that our application uses. This is where we define the dependencies of our, of our blog or our Rails application. Um, I'm coming down here, I'm gonna say gem, and we're gonna say um, our spec Rails. I think it's an underscore. And we're going to kill the server and we're gonna bundle. 
Uh, bundle is a way of saying, is, is, oh, okay, our spec rails, it's a dash. I was wrong. Um, it's just gonna install the dependencies and the only dependency that we have to add is our spec rails. Okay, and then, um, let's see, remember we can rails G for some help. If you, just, if you don't say help, if you just run a command without any arguments, it's the same thing as, as saying dash dash help. Um, now notice that we have this whole other section here um, for RSpec, and one of the options is RSpec install right here. So of course, if you're doing this like, you know, you can go out on, um, out on RSpec's install guide and it has a nice walkthrough on how to install RSpec. Um, I've done it a few times, uh, and there's a little bit of breadcrumbs here to help remember how to do it. So this is it, we would say Rails G, our spec install with no arguments, I think. Great, so it created some stuff, some stuff for us like a spec directory, a spec helper, a Rails helper, this dot file for our spec. Um, there's not actually a lot that we need to do to have like a simple, um, a simple smoke test for like, let's say our index view. Of course, I turned off my server, so that's not gonna work. Um, let's do Rails G, uh, RSpec, let's do a request spec, um, request, and I think I just give it a resource name, but let's see what it is, name, that seems right. Unfortunately, there's no examples provided, um, but let's just say uh, post, posts, I think it should be plural. Cool, it created a file for us. Noise, let's go take a look at it. Uh, great, so we, we're describing uh, post. RSpec provides a more or less a DSL to write tests for your code, a bunch of helpers for things like expectations and mocks and um, assertions and whatnot. There are other ways of writing tests um, in Ruby, which is what we actually skipped when Rails installed. Um, that some people prefer, and I like RSpec, but mainly just because it's the tool that I use and know really well. There is kind of a, I want to say a steep learning curve, but there's a lot to know about RSpec. Um, so once you've, once you've put in the time to learn it, it's a really great tool. Um, if you're just starting out, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but not because it's like elite, it's just, there's, it does more, um, which can also be helpful. Best, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great tool. Like a it does, yeah, yeah, and that's kind of the idea, and the reason it's, it's built kind of like a DSL is, is the idea that maybe non-developers or pseudo, you know, there's roles in a lot of companies that are not necessarily developer roles, but they're working with developers. They want those folks to be able to go in and look at the tests that have been built and read them more or less like English. So, you know, we're describing posts, and then we're saying we're describing um, get this slash post action. We say it, it works. Now write some real specs because it doesn't really know how to write the tests for us. Um, but we're, yeah, I think it pretty much will. Um, with maybe without any modifications at all, actually. Uh, should probably give this a. Okay. So we're just going to say um, our spec and give it the path to the spec. If we didn't give it any path at all, actually, you know what? We don't have any other specs, so just forget the path. We're just gonna run our spec. It's gonna run our whole test suite, which is just this one post. Um, so post index path, yeah. Um, it's actually just post path. I don't know why I put index in there. So this should work. Great. So not a really great run through on specs, but from here you can just start adding specs for other things that work like this. The great place to start is just to write an expectation on I make a request and here's what status I expect back. Um, and it, in fact, if you write nothing else, if you write tests that just ex put expectations on the response codes of, of your controllers uh, or uh, in your request specs, you're gonna cover a lot of your code, which is great. Not encouragement to do that, but um, sometimes writing good tests is a challenge, start there. Um, What's that? You gotta make it fail. You gotta at least make it fail. Okay, fine. Um, so, so Josh, Josh is, is suggesting that we are good developers, and we see a green test. Um, actually, we saw it fail already once, but that was because a test was broken, not because the code was broken. What we want to see is that the test is really actually passing. So, we want to make the test fail in some way on purpose, 
uh, to go from red to green. So we see a failing test, and then we see a passing test. If we were really wanting to do this, we probably would have written the test and see it fail, probably because um, you know, the route, route helper doesn't exist or something like that. Then we would have generated our code, and then we would have worked on it until the test actually passes. But we're kind of doing this uh, uh, backwards, I guess. So we're going to go to the post controller. And let's just, oh, this is my favorite here. I like to uh, raise hell, which is going to raise an error. Oh my. Yeah, oh my. That's explicit. Oh, whoops. I just, okay, hold on. <laughs> Wrong command. R spec. Um, uh, let's see. I'll make this big. Okay, here we go. Yay. Um, so it fails with an error. We can see that doesn't really prove a whole lot to us, but it proves at least that it's going through the controller action, it's getting that far, and that we can stop it at that point. Um, there's other ways. Anybody have any other suggestions how we could read this that's more useful? Yeah. That's, that's probably better. Um, so instead of raising an error here, let's go down here and say head, uh, like, I don't know, um, what's a, what's, what's a non-200 status I should return? Four, uh, four, four, sure, great. Um, so head 404, if I'm doing this right, um, will basically just return a status code of, of four. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, you're right. Let's just do that. Okay, uh, RSpec, let's see if this works. Um, great, should have had uh, 200, but the status was 404. There we go. So with that, we can be reasonably sure um, that our test is actually testing the right action. And this, this seems like a silly practice to go through a lot of times, um, but it's when you don't go through the practice that it bites you, and you find out that it's not silly. Yeah, yeah. You're like, wait, why is it working? Yep. It yeah, we, we run into false positive stuff a lot um, as consultants working on other people's stuff, like st code that hasn't been touched for years and everybody just assumes it's fine, and then you're like, why is this passing? This should never pass. Oh, it never should have passed, or never was passing, truly. Um, okay, okay, one more thing, since we're going over time. Um, Rails S, there's, there's one more thing that I wanted to say, which is that, um, remember when we went to the index view and it's like, yeah, you're writing on the Rails. Um, that's not a really great experience uh, for our blog visitors to come to the front of our website and see, yeah, you're writing on Rails, and then have to go to like slash post to get there. Well, so they know you're on Rails. Yeah, exactly. We don't want them to know that we're on Rails, because oh, we're, embar right. we're embarrassed. Rails is slow and Ruby is dead. <laughs> it's a joke. It's not. Um, so we're, so we're going to change this real quick. Remember how we said only down here? We can do something similar with post where we say accept, accept uh, index. And now this should blow up with a, oh, accept. Did I get to do this right? Accept index. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. We, what we would need to do is we need to go to slash post to see that this is dead. Oh, and it And it is. Okay. I don't know why it's, okay, so yeah, no route matches. So we got rid of our index route. Um, now let's go down and say root, and we're gonna say um, the controller is posts, and the action is index, and if we come over here and refresh, voila. One more thing that I happen to know, and look at that, I even prepared and had this in here from earlier when I was testing all this. Um, we have a bunch of route helpers that are referencing post, help, uh, post path or post URL, and um, we can just find and replace all those real quick like such, which is great. Um, and yeah, with any luck, we should be able to click around and click back, and it should go back to the root path, and it does. And that is how to build a blog in like more like an hour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Question, questions? What about your spec? What about my Does the, does the uh, test say the <laughs> That's great. It won't, actually, and let's, uh, let's prove it. Um, and, and that's good because it should fail under that circumstance because that route doesn't even, oh, okay. Hmm. We got rid of that route, and it's testing index, isn't it? Oh, one of the things that I found and replaced was root path, so it does pass. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> we remembered that. That's true. That is true. You are right. With find and replace, it's true. Just put it in a p tag, you'll be fine. Yeah, just slap a p tag in there. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> um, I do actually. I know yeah. that the on the error page uh, looks like they give you an instance to IRB now. Mm -hmm. Can you bind with pry? You still can. In that. It's mm. a good question. I actually don't know. I don't. I never use the web console. 
like personally, like I did a couple times to see it, and it's very cool that it's there. Um, so I'm not sure if you can. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it, what he was talking about is when you have an error page displayed. It used to be like you know, there's an error, and then it was like, hey, here's some helpful stuff about what happened in the error, like improved where it gave you more context. And now they've gone so far as to actually drop in an interactive uh, console where the error occurred so that you can debug it right in place, like from the browser, which is very cool. Any other questions? All right, thanks.